Welcome back. Today we're having a look at Google Play services. That is some real-time multiplayer, non-real-time multiplayer, um, achievement, leaderboard, cloud saving, and maybe something else I keep forgetting, but <laughs> that's what we're having a look at today. Now, to have these feature enabled in your game, to use the Google Play services, what you need to do is to make sure you have some kind of setup going on first. You have to activate the whole platform, you have to uh, make a service on the web, you have to do a couple of things, and that's exactly what we're gonna go through today, and we're gonna do it as fast as we can. All right, let's get started. In a moment, before that, I'd like to tell you what the requirements are. So you're going to need to know how to build yourself an application and know how to upload it on the Google Play console. We have a video for that. Um, you can click on the eye at the top there to know how to build your, your APK, build your game, and then another one to know how to publish to the Google Play Store, which you'll also need. But if you're familiar with both of these concepts, let's get right into it. We're going to start by going over on our Google Play services and we'll create ourselves a new application. Now, this is something that you could already have done in the past. Um, this is an actual application. It's a draft at the moment. And then once you're done, once you have your game, you're going to create yourself a service, which is pretty much very similar to a game on Google Play Store, but it, it works in a different manner. So you don't really publish that. Um, you don't download a service. Instead, your game will use a service. Now, um, you can enable over here the, the save games if you plan on using um, the save feature on the cloud, go ahead and enable that. And then what you'll need to do is go over to game services and link your application. I'm currently using an Android application. Now, if you see over here, I don't have the right package right now because my other game isn't uploaded. So I have to do that. And while I was making this, I realized that, hey, um, I actually don't have my APK. So I had to create myself my own APK, realized I didn't have the Android SDK. So re-download that, update the SDK and then um, sign my APK. And once everything was completed, once I had my sign APK, I had, of course, to upload it to my game. So uploaded it to my game. Now what I had to do at that point is go back on the services and link it. So on the left hand side, linked app, Android, and I was able to find my package. Now, if we scroll down a little bit down below here, you have some couple of services you can enable. So multiplayer, turn-based multiplayer, and then anti-piracy as well. Over here, I did enable it, but it was a mistake. Enabling anti-piracy means that nobody will be able to access your services unless they download from the Play Store. And in our case, for testing purpose, we don't really download that from the Play Store. Instead, we build it directly on our device, so it's quite different. Um, so eventually, I would had to go back and remove the anti-piracy from my services to work. That's one of the multiple pitfalls there is when you're trying to um, deploy the Google Play services. All right, so your application is now a link. The next step is going to get yourself some resources. Now, I like to create myself a leaderboard, just a temporary leaderboard, because this one I can modify in the future. Um, if you go for an achievement, make sure you put an achievement that's going to stay within your game, because once you publish your your game, or once you publish your service, you can't change the achievement, but you can still change your leaderboard name. So I went ahead, created myself a new leaderboard just so we can have this nice little get resources button. That's the only thing we care about. And then uh, we get to have this code over here. All right, so enough setting up in the website. Now we're gonna go ahead and set up our game, our engine. This link over here in the description down below is going to show you the Play Games plugin for Unity. You can head over to the build, current build, and then the package itself make sure you download that and import this directly in your game. It's gonna take quite a while, but um, just, just sit through it. This is basically all the APIs you're going to need. You'll know that it will have worked if you go under Window and you see Google Play Games. In which case, go ahead, um, click on it, go under Setup and then Android Setup. And in here, you'll be able to paste all the resources we had from the previous step. Then, of course, go ahead and paste it directly in your Android setup and then go ahead and click OK. It's going to tell you that everything is linked, everything is fine. If there's an error, uh, you should stop right there and try to fix that one as soon as possible. Don't, don't keep on going if uh, you don't get to that point. Um, it's also going to create yourself a class over here. This one contained constant. And then to test it out, I recommend that you pause this video, copy this little script right here. It's a simple one just to try and log in. So I went ahead and I built that directly to my phone, wanted to try it out. Everything is hooked into a start, so everything should start on its own. And I've also started a log cat so I could see what's going on. 
to be met with this kind of messages. So what happened is that authentication was canceled and my login was failed, but I didn't really get more information than that. So I went ahead, removed the, um, the parameter I had for LogCat, and I just had a broad view on what's going on with my device, just to learn that, well, the application ID was not found. With a little bit of Googling and a little bit of common sense, you then realize that if the application ID was not found, it's probably because my service wasn't published. So I went ahead and I tried publishing to just get this message over here. This message says, if you publish right now, you're going to lock in everything that has a padlock next to it. So I went back, look at what exactly had a padlock, save game had one, um, unless you turn it off. In that case, you can always turn it on later, but right now it was already on on, so it showed the padlock which means that if you push a service with save game, it's always going to have save game. Um, that was fine with me. I was going to use that feature anyway. So I went ahead, publish that right now. And then of course I had to try this one out again. So hooked in my log cap and I played my, my build on my phone with my awful focus, went ahead and tried to log in and it worked. Went back on my console, saw that everything was working, got my login success. And that's how I've set up the Google Play services as fast as I could. A um, little bit of Googling, a little bit of, of struggle, but hey, in the end, we made it. And um, that's it. I hope you guys have no problem setting this one up. It takes a little bit of time every time you do it for the first time, you could say. Um, that's it. If you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comment section down below. And um, tomorrow or in two days from now, there's also going to be a new video about Google Play save, so the cloud saving. I'm actually getting quite ahead on that. I like it quite a lot. And then of course, achievement, leaderboard, both of them are gonna to be together. There's also gonna be a package on the website. However, this one is gonna be about 130 XP. So you're gonna to need to subscribe and leave about 15 comment if you want this one for free. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for watching. And again, I'll see you soon. Cheers.